Welcome back to What RT Noobs with Channel Disturbance. This is the S51, the Soviet Tier 7 SPG, and it's located on the south spawn of Lake Hill under the command of Tilt Rat of Philo. Now, some people call this RT the Unicorn, mainly because of that long barrel, but this is the 203mm B4 howitzer, so it's actually got a shorter barrel than the uh, BR2, the 152mm, and it's based on the KV-1S chassis. And you can see this one has got our logo on it. Thanks to Sir Rusty for developing the skins. Well, battle has started and everyone's moving off to their firing positions. Now, this was a development, an RT that was um, proposed in 1944. They started work on it in January 1944 and they finished work saying, well, it couldn't be done in, uh, oh, in April of 1944. I think they realized that uh, it really, you couldn't marry the, the, the gun with that particular chassis because it was so, um, un well, so light, it couldn't take the recoil. Every time they fired the gun, it would literally shake the chassis to pieces. Okay, we've got a Tiger One. Fires around in. Unfortunately, it hits the house. Now, one thing the um, the S51 has got a reputation for is the fact that it's got a very, very large footprint when it comes to uh, hitting the target. And that's why it, it picks up so many Bombardier medals. Now, you can see that very few defenders have actually uh, gone up the valley. Most have gone through the town and some have gone up the lake road. And this means that uh, Tilt Rat's very vulnerable, so I think he's decided better for him to relocate closer to the town, but still on the K line, and that way he can defend both the cat and the guys who are moving through the town. Now he's got quite a long reload, 45.13 seconds. It's a huge reload, actually. Okay, he's stopped, and I think he's interested in these tanks at the other end of the town. You see the narrow arc as well. Very, very narrow arc, and that really does mean that it's very difficult to get uh, accurate shots because you have to dial in on target. If the target moves out of the field of fire, oh, he got a nice hit there, 414 hit points, and then got the stun assist when the OI was taken out immediately afterwards. The IS-2 got the kill. Yeah, the narrow arc really can be a problem because uh, you're dialing in on the target. It moves slightly outside the field of fire and all of a sudden your reticle blooms and you have to start aiming all over again. And that's something I think the tank drivers don't appreciate because they will just drive their tank along, stop, dial in their aim and then shoot. Whereas uh, even if the target moves, they'll just adjust their turret. You can't really do that with an RT because if it's got a narrow arc of fire, if you adjust the, the tank in any way, you'll lose your aim. Okay, he spotted two enemy tanks up near our cap area. It's an SU-100 and Jackson. They're very close together. Incredibly close together. Oh, in fact, there's a whole bunch of them. He fires around in and gets a big hit on two of them. He got 141, uh, sorry, 439 off the SU-100M and 370 off the Jackson. And he stunned two other tanks who got hit as well at the same time. Now he's aiming at the 40 TP and the Cromwell, but he's still got another 25 seconds to go for the reload. So hopefully if those T-3485s can hold out, he might be able to kill a couple of those tanks with one shot. At least I'm hoping that. They bunch together like that, they're asking for trouble because this is what the S51's most famous for doing, killing more than one enemy tank at once. Uh, look at those tanks, they're all bunching up. Rounds up. Oh, yes, he got the boat. He took out both the uh, v VK3601H and he took out the 14TP with one shot. Oh, and it looks like they're attackers. I've all but been wiped out. There's just a T-34 and he's been killed. A Jackson, he won't last very long. And there's an SU-100 in the valley and it looks like our guys are, are winning this game. 
We've, we've marked the target for the Jackson. Just waiting for the reload to go through. Oh, he's been killed. And we're capping in the enemy cap. There's no need to cap because we've completed the kills. And that's the end of the game. But a lovely bombardier there by Tilt Rat. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. It's a first class tanker for Tilt Rat in the S51. He got a bombardier. He took out that VK3601H and the 40GP with one shot. And he also picked up a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 13 in that game. Uh, let's have a look at team scores, see where he stood. Oh, before I do that, win eight, 4,014. Super Unicum level. Let's have a look at the team score. Well, there you go, right at the top of the table. In fact, actually, he did the most damage in the battle. Didn't pick up the high caliber, though. Probably didn't have 20% of the enemy hit points in total. He got 2,304 hit points of damage during that game. Just shows the power of that B, uh, B4 howitzer. It really is quite a monster. Um, the next highest score in terms of damage was the IS-2, 1,334. And then came the Skoda T-40, who managed to get 1,271. When it came to kills, it was the Skoda T-40 and the E-25 that did the best. They got three kills apiece, um, and they were in platoon. But unfortunately, their platoon mate only managed to get two kills. So unfortunately, they didn't get the brothers in arms, although they did get very close to it. Um, Tilt Rat managed to get two kills, obviously, from that bombardier, which is quite amazing. And when you look at the base XP, you can see he's right at the top of the table again, 922. Uh, the T3485 managed 867 and the Skoda 24854. So let's have a look at detail. He only fired four shots in that game to get the highest damage in the game. Four shots. Just four. <laughs> it's amazing. Four shots to get that sort of damage. He got two direct hits, no penetrations. And eight splash. So you can see he was hitting multiple targets with each uh, shot he fired. He did damage at 2,304 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. He damaged six of the enemy, but only killed two of four shots. But he did do stun assistance damage of 997 hit points off six stuns. He also got four defense points because the, the tanks he killed were actually in the cap at the time. Um... Let's have a look at the credits. Well, he earned 46,773 credits on a premium account, got 25,725 credits for completing the mission and events, and the total amount for the battle was 72,498. After ammunition resupply, and of course, he didn't fire that many rounds, but they are expensive rounds, he actually ended up with 64,858 credits, and that's pretty good for a tier 7 RT. But uh, it's not an RT that's easy to get because you have to work your way up the KV-2 line, not up the RT line. Uh, he earned 1,383 XP, times two for the first victory of the day, 622 for completing the mission and events. So his total came out at 3,388 experience points altogether. Uh, he actually said a rude word. <laughs> I'm not surprised. But as I said during the commentary, the thing is, the S-51 is famous for getting bombardiers. And this is the first bombardier that he's actually had in the S-51. I think most of us actually get a bombardier in the S-51 because of that big splash footprint. Anyone who's inside the footprint is going to get damaged. And as you saw in those shots, he actually got a huge amount of damage from that shot where he aimed at the bunch of them because they all got affected by that hit. But uh, it was so lovely to take out that 40 TP and the VK as they're on the move uh, and to do so much damage to them, take them out of the game. Um, so congratulations on your first Bombardier in the S-51. It won't be your last one, Tilt Rat, I'm sure of that. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next one. Let's have a look at, uh, um, well, if, if you... Um, if you enjoyed this replay, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel and hopefully it'll be your replay that I'll be featuring in the next video.